I would like to demonstrate how you can deal with different uh, data sets inside uh, RStudio using the ggplot uh, package. First of all, I will start to insert one of these um, R snippets up here. That can also be done through a shortcut, Control alt i where we can put some code. In this case, I need to load the, the ggplot2 package. I do that through the library statement here. And now I'm able to, to actually use that package. One of the built-in data sets in the ggplot package um, is uh, the diamonds data set. And we can just take a brief look at it here. So if I run this uh, line with uh, control enter, we can see the output of this command that just mentions it, this uh, name of the data set that is diamonds. So this lists gives us some information about uh, these uh, items in, in the data set. And there is a number of columns, uh, the weight of the diamond, what the cut has been um, characterized as, the color information, clarity. And each of these cut color and clarity are um, uh, ordinary uh, values. Um, they have um, a specific set of values they, they can be, belong to, uh, and they are not numbers but they are sort of ordered from uh, fair to good to premium and very good and, and so on. So there's some kind of ordering in the data. This is also part of, of, the, of the data set to know this order. And we also have some numeric values, the depth, table, and price, and some dimensions, X, Y, and Z, and, and so on. So this is the information we are uh, are able to to obtain from from this data set if we want to visualize this we can take the data and push it into the ggplot command through this pipe operator this means exactly the same as if i had taken the diamonds and put it in the first uh, input argument to the ggplot command and this uh, syntax is used a lot within uh, R and R Studio, and for me it makes it much easier to actually read uh, what is going on because I take the data here and then I feed it into the ddplot function, and the output from that I feed into a new function. And just to make things complicated, when you pipe stuff into ddplot, you should use this uh, percentage. Uh, less than percentage sign, and when you string together things inside a ggplot command, you should use a plus operator. So what we can specify now is what should be in which axis. So if I want to have the weight, that is the caret value on the x-axis, I say x equals caret, and on the y-axis we can uh, try to put the, the price. And now we need to choose what type of way to, to visualize whatever should be put on the plot. And for starting, I think it's good to use the geome point. So the, the, the geome is how we are visualizing stuff, and here we are using points. Um, there are many other options here. So this should be enough to generate a plot in the uh, ddplot. So let's see uh, what comes out of it. And we get a whole lot in, of information here. We can see that um, as the, the weight goes up, uh, so does the price. And it seems to not just be a, on a linear scale, but more or less on a, a quadratic scale. Uh, but there's also a huge amount of spread in, in the data here. So we can try to see if we can look into additional patterns in, in this part here. And um, so first of all, we can take uh, this uh, entry and copy it down. So we're able to make the exact same plot again, but we could also try to add additional information about the color of the, 
of the diamonds that are represented here. Um, we might look into the, the cut, uh, cut parameter that was also uh, part of, of the data set. And now it uh, seems uh, a bit uh, different. What we can see here is, is the scale for the cut values that is shown over here. It goes from fair to good, very good premium and ideal. And when we take a look at the plot here, we can see that some of the big but cheap diamonds are within this uh, fair amount. And if the cut is better, the price is uh, generally much, much higher. So these are some of the tools that are available inside ggplot. Um, let's try to build a bit more on, on this part because um, a different option we have here is that, okay, we had this cut that determined, okay, where would uh, this go? But we also have the color option and it could be interesting to see if we could combine these in, in the same visualization. So I will try to use what is known as uh, facets to divide the plot into smaller components uh, determined by the color uh, variable. And the color is a scale that goes from D, e, from D up to J. And I haven't really figured out what the different uh, elements of, of this is uh, meaning, but it seems like the D color seems to a bit seems to have higher prices than the uh, J color at least, and actually it might be more or less a, a gradual scale here. So this allows us to show something about how the, how the different variables are, are influencing each other in a plot. So in this plot, we are looking at uh, four different aspects of the data or four different aesthetics as they are called in, in ggplot. So we have this uh, weight, the carrot, the price, and the color that are specified to certain axes, um, the x, y, and the color scale, respectively. And finally, we have this uh, facet wrap that divides the data into separate plots for each of these uh, data sets. Or each, not each of these data sets, but each of the color variables in, in the data sets. So in this way, it's possible to actually investigate quite many uh, possibilities or yeah, to, to in investigate a, a set of data in, in a quite nice way. Um, a different thing I want to demonstrate here is that it is possible to add uh, labels to the different scales. So in this case, I would like to add a description to the x-axis, and that would be the weight, and that is measured in carrots. So we do it like this. So now we have a new scale or new label on the x-axis down here. Um, and we can continue with the same approach here to specify what the Y value is, so that's the price, and I think it's in dollars. Like that, and again, continue and, and generate the plot. If we want, we can actually look into this, um, this data set uh, down here by pressing F1, and then we get to see the, uh, the help for that specific uh, data set here. We could also do that with some of the, the commands we're using. So over here we can see uh, the data sets and or a description of the data set and we can see it consists of um, 53,000 observations each consisting of, of 10 variables including the price, carrot, cut, color and, and so on. And there's also a description of what is the, the range of values these are, are seen within uh, the weights and yeah 
and a description of, of what the, the different things are. So far, so good. So uh, using this approach, we can actually visualize uh, data in, in a quite effective way. And we can also look into some of the, the input down here. We could also try to um, uh, use some different type of aesthetics instead of the carrot and price. Um, so we could try to put some other elements onto to the axis. So I would like to investigate what is the relation between the color from one axis and the value of the on of the color on the price. So I can do it like this. And then instead of using the DM point, I think I can use a DM box plot like this. And then let's see what happens. So what comes out here is that for each of the color variables that we have put on the x-axis down here, we uh, have generated a box plot that displays the minimum value, the maximum value that has been seen, and then um, the 25 percentile and the 75 percentile and the median value of, of the data in, in this uh, category or group. And we can see how the price is increasing through the different uh, uh, colors on, on average. Um, that seems to me a bit counterintuitive because uh, the color information down here, we can see over here, it goes from D, which is the best one, to J, the worst. But it also seems to me that the price increases through these uh, color values. And that might spark our interest in, in looking into this and see, is there anything else this is related to? And I will try to make more or less uh, the same plot here. But instead of looking at the price, I would look at the size of the of the diamond. So that's a carrot. Oh. Sorry, need to put this into one of these uh, boxes with space for yeah, the space for for our code, and now it should appear down here. Yes, so we can also see here that uh, the size of the diamonds, as they decrease in color quality, also seems to increase a bit. So things seem to be uh, related. Uh, so when the price goes up, so to, uh, the weight goes up, so does the price. And if you have a large diamond, it's more uh, likely that it has a, a low quality uh, color in this say, in this case. So um, these are some of the examples of of how you can can visualize data. Um, there's one remaining I would like to, to show, and that's the, the stacked bar plot. Um, so again, we will choose what should be in, in which uh, column. So we have the color on, on the x-axis here, and let me think uh, on the y or on the color scale, we'll have the cut. And then let's see how we can chew this. Uh, I think it was a bar plot like this. Okay, now it tells us that uh, some of the things are. Uh, okay, I, I did something wrong here. Um, and that is, I forgot this uh, ggplot uh, tool, uh, ggplot command. So it couldn't figure out. So. Now we can see how the number of diamonds in the different colors and cuts are distributed. Um, actually, I think I will go on with the fill um, scale here instead of the color. Color only colors the ring or the rim of, of these boxes, but uh, fill will uh, change the, the filling. So, 
so far so good. So now we have an, a distribution of uh, how many um, diamonds are in each category and how they are distributed. And what more? Yeah. So one thing I also wanted to show you is I personally prefer to have a uh, uh, quite simple font. Uh, I, I can't spell right now. Um, I will load this uh, plot named uh, our library named uh, cowplot or package, and I will do that because it um, can contains one uh, um, theme for for these plots where it can modify the look of the plots. Uh, named a uh, cow plot, which I prefer to use. It reduces much of the clutter in the plot. And what we are uh, um, left with with here is uh, is a, a very clean version of, of the graphics that can be plotted or printed directly or included in a paper report or, or something similar. What I remain. What I'll miss to do here is to put on the, the labels. So we have the color label on the x-axis. We have the, I think we can put the, the count uh, on the y-axis. Um, and then we have the fill values over here. That will be the cut. Okay, yeah. I addressed it in, in a proper way. And it's also possible to add additional information here with a title of the plot. Um, distribution of um, diamond types. And there's even a subtitle. Um, split by and cut. So now we have a, a quite nice piece of, of graphics and the only thing we are missing to do now is to actually save this to a file. So I'll save this into a variable named p and then use the ggsave uh, function here. And I can put the cursor here next to ggsave and then press F1 and get the uh, help up on that. So I'll uh, insert a file name here and the plot that I just saved in, in P here. And if I want to, I can also add information about the height and width of, of the plot to, to go with here. So I think we have more or less uh, in, in place here. So now we generated this uh, file name or this plot in, in this uh, location. And if I can find it, that would be, be nice. So just a moment. So there it was. And that's the file name. And here we have the, the graphics in in a really nice um, vector version in a PDF file, so it's just ready to, to include. If we are not uh, satisfied with the aspect ratio of, of the plot, we can go back to our studio and simply uh, say that it should have a width of uh, 6 inches and a height of uh, 4, and just run the command and now the figure has been updated here. So I think now we has been through the the most important steps of using the the ddplot package for visualizing uh, data. Um, so if you have a single data set, you can put a lot of information into uh, plots like this.